Hey there, so today we're going to be taking a look at Hogwarts Legacy running on the newest 23.2.2 drivers from AMD. Now these actually came in with optimizations for Hogwarts Legacy, and we're going to see if that actually solved any of the performance problems in the game, at least with this chip. And as you can see already on the screen running at the stock 15 watt TDP, and this is with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR, but it's FSR set to balanced. You can see here that we are still finding the same issues with 1% and lows that have been present throughout the entirety of the game. So on that front, it really didn't do much at all to solve the problems, though 15 watts is a very low TDP for a chip like this. So we can also try to raise the TDP up to 25 watts to see if that can solve some of our problems. Unfortunately, it really doesn't seem like 25 watts did much to solve those issues. We still have 1% low dips that are going underneath 30 FPS, and we're really even just struggling to keep a 30 FPS average here. It's certainly not an un playable experience and it is pretty decent through a large amount of sections on here but you're still going to encounter those frequent stutters here and there that end up actually bringing down the one percent lows pretty noticeably it's certainly a doable experience it's just not going to be a great experience now as a last ditch effort to see if i can get any kind of decent performance out of this i did raise the tdp all the way up to 30 watts and i did drop fsr from balance down to performance so we are running this at the lowest possible resolution that we can with the FSR and we are pumping as much power as we realistically can into this chip and unfortunately our one percent lows still are struggling to even make it past the teens and our average didn't really see a meaningful uplift at all now this isn't too surprising because it really seems like AMD is not focusing on optimizing games for any GCN based GPUs at all at this point and unfortunately since we have Vega here we are still on GCN it's not like what the 6000 and 7000 series are going going to end up having which is RDNA 2 although there are still some 7000 chips that are still rocking Vega but I can almost guarantee you you are going to be a second class citizen to AMD it really seems like if you want what decent performance now? on newer titles you are going to have to go with RDNA even if it's a 6000 series you don't need to get something that's 7000 series but if you can get yourself on RDNA I think you're putting yourself into a position where you're going to have a much better time but for the those of us that are still stuck on Vega, it really doesn't seem like this update from AMD did anything for us, which is unfortunate to see. But anyways, I will catch you guys in the next one.